In this video, we want to introduce the method of Lagrange multipliers. Um, the playlist for the videos is at digital-university.org. If you go to the uh, playlist for the calculus videos and then scroll down to where it says applications of derivatives, you see we have a section there titled optimization with constraints and that's where all these um, videos for this particular play series are located. Now, in a previous video in this series, we had a relatively simple problem where we had a rectangle and its diagonal had to be equal to the value of the square root of 3 and we wanted to maximize the area of the rectangle. So we wanted to know what values did we need for x and y to find that uh, maximum area. And that problem was simple enough. Here we had a function the area, and then we had a constraint, but this constraint was helpful because, for example, we could solve this equation real easy for y, that's just the square root of 3 minus x squared, put it over here, then the area is expressed just in terms of one variable, then take the derivative of the area with respect to x, and set it equal to zero, and we can find our critical points. So that was pretty straightforward. Um, all the problems that we have are going to be of that general nature. We have some function of x and y that we want to optimize, and then there is some constraint equation. We can take 3 over to this side and have it set equal to 0, and then we have a constraint equation, and we want to use both sets of information to optimize this function. And that's what we're going to do in this video, only we're going to be using the method of Lagrange multipliers. And then we'll use that technique to go back and solve this simple problem. Now, using Lagrange multipliers in a simple problem like this is kind of overkill, but I think it's a good way to just try to, uh, to illustrate the, the way the technique works. So, in general, the thinking is this. We have some function. of x and y, and we have a constraint equation involving x and y that equals 0. And then in our previous videos, we used this information to express this just in terms of one variable, then take the derivative and set it equal to 0. Well, we can say in general that the differential df xy we want to set that equal to 0. And if this is 0, then certainly the differential is 0. And if we multiply this by some constant, say lambda, that will still be 0. So this is 0, and this is 0, so if we add them together, that will still be equal to 0. And of course, this is a function of x and y. Now, the general expression for that differential, that is, that will be the partial of f with respect to x dx plus the partial of f with respect to y dy, that is the differential df, and we want that equal to 0. And likewise, the differential d psi, that will be the partial of psi with respect to x dx plus the partial of psi with respect to y dy, and this is multiplied by lambda.
and that equals zero. So this is just this. So let's combine these together then into a single expression. We'll have this plus this plus lambda This is times dx plus, we will have lambda. Now we have the partial of f with respect to y, try to keep things in focus. And we don't want lambda out here, we want it in here. this sum equals zero. Are we in focus? Yes. This plus this equals zero. Well, what if we choose a value of lambda so that inside the parentheses this is going to be equal to zero? Well, if this equals zero, then this also has to equal zero. So we're choosing the value of lambda to make this expression equal to zero. Really what we're saying then is that value of lambda that makes this zero, that same value of lambda also has to make this be equal to zero. And we can see that indeed that is true. If we set this equal to zero and solve for lambda, we'll get this expression or take this upstairs using the reciprocal and then use the chain rule and we get that expression for lambda. Now, if we set this equal to zero and solve for lambda, then we have this expression, multiply it by the reciprocal, we have this, use the chain rule and we have the same expression for lambda. Now this doesn't mean much, the partial f with respect to psi, for example for our problem, this is f of x, taking the partial of this with respect to this doesn't tell us much, but we're just demonstrating this to show that indeed no matter which way you do it, lambda comes out to be the same expression. So what we want to do is choose a value for lambda so that this is zero, that same value for lambda also makes this expression equal to zero. So we have the partial f with respect to y plus lambda the partial of psi with respect to y equals zero. This will equal zero. and we had our constraint equation equals zero. So these equations, we will have three unknowns. Equations involving x, y, and lambda. So we have three unknowns and we have three equations. We can solve them to determine not only lambda but also x and y. And in fact, you'll see that in a lot of um, situations, we don't even have to determine what lambda is in order to solve for x and y. And of course, that's what we want because those values of x and y, those indeed are the critical values that we're looking for. So let's see how we can apply this then to our simple problem involving the rectangle. Before we do that, let's make some room. Okay, now we said in general, all of our problems have the same setup. We have some function of x and y that we want to optimize, and we have some constraint condition, an equation that involves x and y that we can have set equal to zero.
Now for our problem, this is just simply x times y, and our constraint equation was x squared plus y squared minus 3 equals 0. So this is a real easy one to solve. If we decided though to solve it with Lagrange multipliers, then we would we want these three equations, so that means take the partial f with respect to x, take the partial of psi with respect to x, and then take the derivative of each one with respect to y. So let's do that. The partial of f with respect to x, that means taking the partial of x times y with respect to x. We also want to take the partial of f with respect to y And of course this is real simple, this is just y. Here we have this product, take the partial of this with respect to y, that's just x. Now we do it for psi, same thing, so we have the partial of, let's write this better, the partial of x squared plus y squared minus 3, take that partial with respect to x, and the partial of psi, which is x squared plus y squared minus 3, take that partial with respect to y, and this will equal just 2x. Taking this partial derivative with respect to y, because here this is 2x, that's 0, that's 0. Take this partial with respect to y, that's 0, this will be 2y. And of course that will be 0. So now we take partial f with respect to x plus lambda the partial of psi with respect to x. That gives us one equation. So what we're going to have is this plus 2 lambda x. So we have y plus 2 lambda times x equals 0. Then we'll have this plus lambda times this. So we will have x from here plus 2 lambda y equals 0. Then we have our constraint equation. x squared plus y squared minus 3 equals 0. So we have three unknowns here, x, y, and lambda, but we have three equations. Let's look at this one. If we solve this for lambda, lambda comes out to equal minus y divided by 2 times x. So we'll take this and put it into our second equation, and let's see what that gives us. We have x, and then we have plus 2 lambda, but we have a minus sign here. So we have minus y over 2x, that's lambda, times 2y. And that has to equal 0. These two, will, these will cancel. Multiply both sides of the equation by x, and we have x squared minus y squared equals 0. And then we have our third equation here, x squared plus y squared equals 0. 
So we can add these together, obviously. Oh, this is not equal to 0. Let's go back to our constraint equation. Minus 3 equals 0. So let's put 3 over on this side. And this will equal 3. Now add that 0. And we have 2 times x squared equals 3. Or adding these together, these cancel. 2x squared equals 3 or x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2, which is the same answer that we obtained in the previous video. So that really is the end of the problem. Now you might be thinking, well, gosh, it was a lot easier when you had this problem set up originally. Just solve this for y put that into here and take the partial of this with respect to x. And you're right, that is a lot easier to do it. Again, we just wanted to take a simple example, though, to demonstrate the technique of Lagrange multipliers. Because what will happen in more complicated problems if we try to use this approach, the algebra can get to be horrendously uh, complicated. Whereas if we use the approach for the Lagrange multipliers, then it's a much more elegant and much more um, easier way to solve the problem.